Hi folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. The AT4 trim level has been a success for GMC and that's why they've rolled it out across their entire lineup. Now the last model to get it is right here. That's the 2022 Terrain AT4 and it gets a couple features that make it more off-road ready. But are they any good? Well that's what we're going to find out in this video. Let's start with the walk around and we have to start with the powertrain. That is a one and a half liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. It makes 170 horsepower, 203 pound feet of torque. And that is sent through a nine speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive. Now on the terrain, when you go for the AT4 package, a lot of it is about the styling. You of course get the AT4 badges, you get this unique grill up front here, and then you also get those gloss black 17 inch wheels and all terrain tires. So from the exterior, it definitely looks a little different than a standard terrain. Now, when it comes to towing and payload, towing on this model, 1500 pounds and payload, I'll quickly check the door jam sticker. Wow, you're only talking about 819 pounds of payload, which is a fairly low number. You get four 200 pound adults and you're basically loaded up. And now it's time for another edition of Dove Steve Fit. Well, let's take a look at the back seat of this terrain. Now I will start by pointing out, you get two lower latch positions and three top tethers along this back seat. That is nice. Oops. Now, let me get in here. This is 39.7 inches of rear seat legroom, and this is my seating position. So yeah, this is actually fairly comfortable for me. I stand at six foot two. I have just enough headroom, and we do have the panoramic sunroof here. If we didn't have it, I'd have more. But even with it, I do have just enough space. Uh, yeah, you know what? I could definitely sit in here for a long period of time. So when it comes to rear seat space, you don't have to worry too much here in the terrain. Let's take a look at the rear end now, and this is a powered hatch here on the AT4. And it is a decent amount of storage space. This is just a hair under 30 cubic feet of storage back here. You also get this nice thick rubber floor mat. I like that if you are doing outdoorsy things. Now this can open up and you do get some storage down in here. And then underneath the storage, you also get a spare. It's not a full size spare, but still nice to have a, an actual spare tire rather than nothing down there. And then finally, you get manual seat releases over here for your second row. So you can grab those and those seats will flip down just like that. All right, folks, now it's time for the roller test. Now, the first thing I wanna test is with this AT4, it says it has two wheel drive mode. Now that's not very common. These days, usually when you get an all wheel drive vehicle, it is all wheel drive all of the time and it makes that decision for you. Here in the terrain, you're allowed to put it into two wheel drive mode. And I'm curious if it is true front wheel drive and two wheel drive. So we've got the front wheels up on rollers. I'm gonna put it in drive now and we'll see what happens. And as the name suggests, in, I'm going to give it a little throttle now. This is true two-wheel drive. And again, I think that's pretty cool that they actually allow you to make the choice to uh, just have front-wheel drive because that's going to save fuel. Now, well, let's test the all-wheel drive by adding a roller to the equation. And now, as you can see, we have an extra roller underneath this terrain. So this is the hardest possible situation when the all-wheel drive system needs to send traction to just one wheel, in this case, the rear passenger. Now, all I'm gonna go ahead and do is put it into all-wheel drive mode. 
which it now has on, and we're in drive. I wanna see if it'll get off the rollers just in all-wheel drive mode, and if it won't, then we'll try off-road mode, okay? Here we go, let's see what happens. Oh, it's trying. Traction control's trying to send power. I feel like I'm inching forward. Oh, here we go, here we go, and there it is! Well, that definitely took uh, a good, I don't know, five, eight seconds maybe before traction control was able to figure out what it was doing in the rear end and send power to the appropriate wheel. But it is always good to know that the system can get power to just one wheel when it needs to. And now folks, it is time to look at the underside of this Terrain AT4 using our new car ramp. This is the first vehicle of the year we've put up there, but it definitely won't be the last because we like to take a look what's underneath. So first of all, you will notice up here in the front of this AT4, you do get a nice heavy duty skid plate, but that is about it. Once that first skid plate is done, there is no protection at all for the rest of this vehicle. Granted, this is in the most important spot. All right, folks, now we're out here actually driving in the terrain and we are gonna go off-road, so make sure you stay tuned for that. For now though, let's just talk about what it's like cruising around on road. Now, like I mentioned, AT4 is new for terrain this year. You saw it from the outside. On the inside, we get some unique stitching. We also get the AT4 stitched into the headrests. And that's really about it on the interior. So it does pump up the styling a little bit, but it's not huge. Kind of a huge sunroof. Fair. Yeah, sunroof. That's fair, there is a panoramic sunroof which is nice as well. That's not AT4 specific though. No, I'm just saying, it's huge. And it's becoming so much more common, these monster sunroofs. Uh, one thing that is new for 22 though is the head-up display, which is cool. And I don't like to complain about a head-up display, but I don't know, Dad, why they have to use that little plastic lift-up screen in front of the windshield and why they couldn't just project it on the windshield. Someone smarter than me will have to explain why head-up display doesn't work with some windshields, because I love it, but I hate that it has to use that little uh, pop-up screen. And, and I think it's because of the rake of the windshield. This is a fairly severe rake. It is. So if you'd have passed math in high school, <laughs> you could figure out that angle of incidence yes. and realize that it would distort. You could very well just, be right. Just saying. You could very well be right. I still don't like it, though. Engineers should figure it out. <laughs> um, now moving beyond that, we have a small turbocharged engine, all wheel drive. Like we already demonstrated with the rollers, you can put this thing just into front wheel drive and it will stay just in front wheel drive. That's especially nice for helping you save fuel. Uh, not only is it front wheel, but it disconnects the rear axle or the rear differential to make sure that you're not yeah, sucking up extra power. So I appreciate that. And now all of that said, Dad, uh, what do you have to say about the way it drives? You know what, this is just, it's a nice little compact SUV, which actually kind of drives larger than it is. Um, and that's certainly the way it feels space-wise inside. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reality is if I'm buying a terrain, uh, I'm buying it for what's going on in here. I'm buying it for, for my family, for the dog, for the stuff that I gotta carry. It's decent cargo space in the back. And then the look of it, right? Um, let's not get too carried away with the AT4 thing. That's in this instance, it's more of a styling mm -hmm. exercise because uh, I wouldn't want to get stuck off road with this. It's <laughs> the, the the clearance on the thing is just, it's, it's too low. No, yeah, it's just not there. And yeah, they're just playing into what's going on everywhere else in the market. This is gonna compete with your RAV4 TRD off-road, your CRV Trail Sport, uh, the Wilderness lineup from Subaru, all these manufacturers, CX-50 from Mazda, all these manufacturers are rolling out these more rugged, adventure-focused models. And they all go a little different. Some of them go a little further on the off-road stuff. Some of them go less. This is definitely less. It doesn't feel that off-road ready. But all that being said, Dad, what the heck? Let's stop talking about it. We do have off-road trails, so let's take it out there now and we'll see how it handles. I'm interested. <laughs> all right, so we're doing... Yeah, that's a mosquito. Uh, we're doing a section of Wall Street here. This is a new trail we just finished last fall. It's still really rough. And you know what? The one thing with this terrain is that chin spoiler, man. Ouch. We're going to do a little crawl. 
falling here. Oh, nice. Here it goes. Bing, bang, okay, boom. Okay, slow down. Slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. These holes here are very big. We're trying to avoid some of the bigger holes here. Okay, now straighten it out. Yep, right there. Yeah, I got to get in here with the box screen. Very nice. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Man. This is this is rougher than a cottage room, really, so to speak. Oh, that's a deep hole. That tire's right off the ground now, man. Hold on. Yeah, back it up. That hole is way too deep. Here's a traction test. You're not gonna come forward, you gotta go back. Come on, baby. Get me power in this front tire. There it is. Yeah, keep going that way. Okay. And now as, as close to this tree as you can get, come forward. You're okay still, straighten out, you're okay. If you straighten out, you're okay. Skid plate, skid plate, skid plate. Okay, that's the... <laughs> That's well, the, the all-wheel drive is working well here on the terrain, but the skid plate is absolutely earning its key, but hey, made it through. Well, folks, you just saw it. The skid plate here is the most important functional upgrade because it's getting worked a lot. You know, less than seven inches of ground clearance, so the clearance is just not there. Then there's those uh, plastic air dams in front of the wheels too, which takes you down to, I don't know, a couple inches of ground clearance. So you could see a couple times when we were getting into those big holes left behind by the backhoe, yeah, the, the vehicle just couldn't find traction because one end was too low and the rest of the tires, uh, yeah, just couldn't grab on. Yeah, now, the thing that worried me the most, just so I could throw it in, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you've, you've got pictures of my face cringing, is the approach and departure. Because, you know, once you get into a hole, is if you got traction and you got enough clearance, you know that you'll climb back out. But I was just so worried about that front fascia. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and that would be your worry the whole time. Now, the tires seem to do okay. They're a bit of a step above, uh, you know, standard on-road tires, so that's also nice. And then when it did need to figure out how to split power, the four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive system did do it. Now, it took a, a beat for it to figure out where to go, but it did get you through there. So, like most of these packages, I think we always come back to the same thing. This will get you to the trail down the rough dirt road, but this is not the vehicle for the trail. That's sort of how you have to treat them. I almost got a different way of looking at it. This this package is, is when you stupidly get into a situation you should never have been in in the first place, <laughs> it'll probably get you out. Okay, that's fair. Okay, true. but you're not going saying, hey honey, let's go off-roading today in the AT4. <laughs> not in this version anyway. It's That's not what this is for. No, and that's it. And the one thing is AT4 is not created equal, especially with that new Sierra AT4X. That thing is basically a ZR2, but it's a GMC, so they had to call it AT4. So yes, each package you have to look at it individually on that vehicle, and when it comes to the terrain, AT4 is a lot more about the way it looks than about where it goes. Yeah, and, and to that to that point, I like the way it looks, and 
I like what's going on inside here in terms of just a comfortable commuter. Sure. And with all that said too, I might as well drop in here in Canada. This model that you're looking at, $43,000, starts at about thirty-six, dollars and then we have a couple packages, uh, things like the surround view camera system and the big sunroof, stuff like that is added on. But even at just a hair over forty, dollars it's fairly competitive uh, with those other models I mentioned, like the RAV4. Well folks, we are coming to the end of this video, and normally I would stand outside the vehicle to do the outro but the bugs are out in full force right now we got the bad mix between black flies and mosquitoes so we're doing the outro from inside the car and that's the other thing i will say about white paint jobs they show bugs the front end of this gmc is a mixture of white paint and bug guts <laughs> Um, so yeah, Dad, I think we've said it all. You know what? This is not a hardcore off-roader. In fact, I barely call it a soft rotor. It's, a, it's an emergency. Like you said, I got myself somewhere I shouldn't be, and this thing is a step above a standard terrain. It might help get you out. But more so than that, it's a comfortable, quiet, little compact crossover. And if you don't like the looks of a, a CRV or a RAV4, this is something that looks a little different, offers some unique styling in the marketplace. I think that's what's really important. I think that's the wrap up, Steve. Well, yeah, folks. So now please go below. Let us know what you think of this GMC and AT4 in general. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come back here to Truck King to see what we are testing next. See ya. Bye-bye.